welcome back to another edition of the Penn State 365 podcast. I'm Richard Schneider, right? publisher of Nittany Nation, and we're joined by senior writer of Nittany Nation, beat writer, Mr. Do-It-All for, for Penn State Athletics, Dylan. Dylan, what's going on, man? Uh, not much, uh, Richie. I thought it was going to be a quiet day, but uh, <laughs> things have changed a little bit here uh, this evening, have they not? Oh, yeah. You're not kidding. I mean, uh, we were talking about it a little bit uh, before the news broke. And we're like, yeah, there's this rumor out there. Yep. He's going to John Scott Jr., defensive line coach, Penn State, is going to go to the NFL. And I'm like, all right, let's, let's see how we want to do this real quick. Let's just confirm one more time. And all of a sudden, it gets tweeted out by someone else. And it's like, all right, well, shit, we, we should have just tweeted it, I guess, at that point. But no, we always like to get our sources and make sure everything's correct. Double check it all. You know, you always want to do that. As a Absolutely. And of course, it was, uh, our sources confirmed to us just... Seconds Pretty much later. as soon as I saw, <laughs> saw, saw uh, John's tweet on Twitter. Uh, yeah. But that's how it goes in our world sometimes. Uh, uh, but, yeah, we have confirmed uh, with our own sources that John Scott Jr. will be leaving Penn State for the NFL, specifically the the, the Detroit Lions, and they're opening uh, on the defensive line. Um, tough hit for Penn State. Not somebody I think that a lot of people were expecting to leave the program this year. There's always been talk, hey, his son recently graduated from State High, so if he was ever going to move back down south or move elsewhere, this would be time to make sense now that his son is out of high school. Uh, but we were expecting him at least to be here at least one more year. Uh, but that obviously changed, and I, I don't think you can fault a guy for – uh, taking a job at the NFL level. They don't come around that often. And uh, his track record obviously proves that he can coach at a high level. He's done it at multiple stops, including Penn State, where uh, their defensive line was pretty good this season. Uh, didn't rack up a ton of sack numbers all the time, but it was a very sound defensive line in both the pass rush uh, up against the run. And I mean, Chop Robinson turned into the best defensive event in college football, according to PFF this year. And John, in his first year as a full time defensive event under John Scott. So uh, definitely not shocking that he got such an opportunity. Uh, but the timing obviously was a little bit of a surprise for us because, as you said, we didn't hear about this ourselves until uh, maybe five, 10 minutes before it got reported on Twitter. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely crazy. Um, this is going to be another uh, assistant coach loss for Penn State. And like you mentioned, he, he has a hell of a background. This man's been in the SEC with Arkansas and South Carolina for multiple years. Then he goes to Penn State for three years. And then this past season, like you mentioned, they didn't rack up a ton of sacks. But Danny, Deny Dennis Sutton, a true freshman, had three sacks. Adisa Isaac had four sacks. Uh, Dan, uh, Chop Robinson was ranked, like you said, the number one edge rusher in all of PFF. Like he, And P.J. Mustafer, who we – all forget about is headed to the combine uh, this week. So he's obviously produced quite a bit. He's recruited really well too. Uh, he just, he's, he's moving on up and this is going to be his first official shot as a full-time position coach in the NFL. He was an assistant D line coach with the jets and a QC with them for a year as well. So he get he gets his shot and it's a move up for him. So it makes total sense. Now the big question that everyone wants to know is who's next. And I think everyone's list is going to have this one specific name as the home run type hire. And his name is Elijah Robinson. It makes total sense. What can you tell me about Elijah it, for fans that don't know about him? Yeah, I mean, if uh, you're a Penn State fan, you don't know about Elijah Robinson. Uh, you're not a Penn State a little fan. Surprised, but <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, Elijah Robinson's one of the top defensive line coaches, one of the top defensive line recruiters in the country. He's been at Texas A&M for a while now. I forget how many years off the top of my head. Uh, he's always been a guy that Penn State fans have pointed to as a potential, you know, defensive line coach for the Ninny Lions because of his uh, history with the program, uh, played for the program, uh, obviously had a great uh, relationship with former Penn State defensive line coach Larry Johnson Sr. Because of that relationship, a lot of people have also pointed to him as being potentially the next defensive line coach at Ohio State as well. So there's always been that conversation, Will where will he end up first, Penn State or Ohio State? Uh, the answer so far has been Texas A&M, and uh, the Aggies keep on at, adding money to his uh, contract to keep him in uh, College Station. We'll see if that happens this time, or if perhaps Penn State does make a run at him. It's not going to be easy. They're going to have to throw a lot of money at him. I assume they would even have to throw potentially a co-defensive coordinator title at him. We know 
Poindexter's already a co-DC on the team, so they would uh, then have uh, two co-DCs. But uh, I think most college football fans know uh, a lot of these titles are added for money purposes to add a little bit extra money to deals. Yes, they do have extra responsibilities to go with it, but a lot of it is for that money side of things. And that could be what happens with Robinson. But if they're going to get him, it's going to take quite a bit of money to bring him away from College Station. But obviously the connection is there. The history is there. It comes down to how much does Elijah want to leave Texas A&M for Penn State and if the money is right. Yeah. But no, overall, you, you, long stop. Yeah, that's, that's what it kind of seems like. Now, the interesting part here is there, there's a couple factors. Number one, like you mentioned, Ohio State – He's being there's a rumor he's being groomed to be the next D line coach there when Larry Johnson's ready to give it up. The second thing is his head, his former head coach that he worked under in friend, friend, oh, not friend, uh, Matt Rule is at Nebraska now, and apparently they tried to lure him away this offseason and there was no success whatsoever. Yeah. And, and he was with Rule for one, two, three, four, four, four seasons at two different stops between Temple and Baylor. So that was significant. Yeah. And now the third and, thing I want to mention. Oh, you're gone. Yeah. No, I was just going to mention, I, I forgot to mention that during the 2011 season, uh, after everything went down and Larry Johnson uh, needed help with the defensive line, uh, during those last two months, Robinson did uh, serve as the defensive line coach, uh, which, of course, during that time, he helped coach guys like Devin Still, Aaron Mabin, Jared Audrick, and uh, I'm sure there's a name or two I'm missing off the top of my head as well. Yeah, just just a couple of big names in Penn State history. Um, yeah, but uh, and, yeah, and go, you go ahead. I'll, I'll just no, add no, one more thing. <laughs> all right. Uh, um, I, I, go you go, you go, you go. Okay, we'll, I'll, figure, I'll we'll go. figure this out. We're we're um, new to this. We'll figure this out. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, there then was uh, obviously his coaching history on the defensive line is fantastic because, like you said, he was under Matt Rule at Temple where he coached. Names like Hassan Reddick, who this year for the Eagles and over the last few years really has been one of the best defense events in in all of the NFL, one of the best pass rushers in all of the NFL. Yeah, a lot of people forget about that. And he he had that Owls team with the conference best 40 sacks. If you ever told me Temple had 40 sacks in a season, I'd call you a liar. But he, he, made, yeah. he made it happen. But the other third factor I wanted to mention with Robinson is – so there was always rumors he was really tight with Mike Elko, and Mike Elko obviously got the job at Duke as the head coach. Yeah. And apparently he also tried to take Robinson with him. Now, Duke doesn't have Duke might have the Ivy League academics, but they don't have the Texas A and M oil money. <laughs> so yeah, that was that, that one. Was, yeah, that one was never happening. But he's been at like the crazy part about Robinson to me is he's not only played at Penn State for four years, but he also got his master's from Penn State four years later. Like. He's been there as a director of community relations. He's been there as a GA. Like, if if the time yeah. to go was now, like, and plus, let's let's be honest, how hot is that seat down at A and M for uh, Fisher? I know, like, not the best uh, I, season in the world. Yeah. No, yeah, like I, I'm not sure how close Texas A and M would be to Fire and Fisher, uh, but uh, even for me, it's like. When does it get to a point where Fisher may decide that he wants just to, he's willing to walk away from the money and leave uh, for a, a different job? Because it's obviously not been going around. It's, and it sounds crazy to talk away from all that money. But if there's somebody in college football who would do that, I, I think it would be Fisher uh, because down there it just hasn't worked out. But his seat is definitely hot. But as you said, the history with Elijah and Penn State is so deep. I mean, you look at it, he, he came to Happy Valley as a freshman in 2004, and he wouldn't leave Happy Valley until 2013 when he went to Temple. Uh, so he was there for almost 10 years before he left, and it's been about 10 years since he left. So it, it could be a time for a return. So that, there's your there's your magic number 10. Just give him a 10 year contract and go from there. But uh, we we got to move on to other names. Obviously, there's going to be a bunch sure. of them. Um, I think the most uh, uh, most I can't say obvious again because I just said obvious like four times. But the the most realistic name that that, ma that makes yeah. the most sense it has to be Dion Barnes. He's already there. He's a former Penn State defensive lineman. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about him. Yeah, I mean a rising star. Uh, actually, somebody recently asked me if uh, who do I think on this Penn State coaching staff on the younger side could be a, a star in the industry going forward, and I said 
immediately Dion Barnes. Uh, at, he was been a graduate assistant where he, he actually did a great job with Penn State on the recruiting trail. Uh, when he could talk to recruits, he, he helped sell a bunch of defensive linemen on the, on Penn State's vision, what Penn State could do for them. Uh, so as a recruiter, Dion Barnes is expected to be a home run recruiter eventually after he gets his feet wet, gets settled in on the recruiting trail once he does end up with a defensive line job. Because if it's not Penn State this year, he's going to end up uh, somewhere very soon as a defensive line coach. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind about that. But Barnes is going to is expected to be a very good recruiter, uh, and he, he's you know a former former Nitty Line grade was in the NFL for a little bit. Uh, knows what it. I think. Sorry, he coached high school football a little bit as well in Philadelphia. So that's where it also makes sense for Penn State getting deeper into Philadelphia and recruiting. Barnes could help with that. Um, so there's a lot to like about Barnes. The only thing really that's missing on his resume is that coaching experience at the college level. He has not been a defensive line coach yet. Is Penn State willing to take that risk in a year that they are expecting to compete for a Big Ten championship, compete for the college football playoffs, and if everything goes right, compete for a national championship? That is something that they will have to consider uh, because the defensive line is going to be a big part of that success if they're going to accomplish uh, any one of those things, if not all three. Yeah. Now, the the thing is with him, like you said, he's it's not that he's young. It's just he's inexperienced. So he's he's 30 years yeah. old. Like, it's not like he's young by any means in terms of coaching. I mean, hell, didn't um, Nebraska just hire like a 22-year-old or a 23-year-old as their wide receivers coach? Yeah, Nebraska's making some uh, Question. really <laughs> – Interesting, but but potential high upside hires out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But now it's now Dion. Like you said, he lacks the experience. They just gave him a title bump. What two weeks ago? Three weeks ago? And at this point, yeah, he got he went from graduate assistant because his uh, time as a graduate assistant came to an end at the end of this past season, mm-hmm. uh, and they they desperately wanted to keep him around. Uh, I believe he did have some interviews with some other team uh, lower. Mm-hmm. Uh, G5 teams, uh, but Penn State wanted to keep him around and was able to get him an analyst uh, job uh, on the staff, which is currently what his role is, and uh, we'll see if he gets another promotion just a couple weeks later. All right, so, I mean, I guess we've just got to keep going here. Next up on the list, we got West Virginia defensive line coach uh, Andrew Jackson. Now, he was a Penn State uh, grad assistant from 2015 to 2016. What, What can you really tell me about him? I know he's a New York native. Yeah, uh, Jackson's uh, quickly, I would say, rising up uh, the ladder of defensive line coaches. He's currently with West Virginia, like you said. Where they, They've had some success on the defensive line. They had uh, 20 and a half sacks in 2021, 40 tackles for a loss, which was top 40 in the nation. Helped coach uh, Dante Stills down there to become an all-Big 12 conference first-team selection. Uh, his defensive lines have had success. Now, it wasn't a great year for uh, the Mountaineers down there on the defensive side of the ball, but his defensive line still held up rather well. I don't think any of their issues are really his fault per se. Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, the overall coaching staff down there and their recruiting abilities. But you look at even beyond that, Ed, uh, he spent time with uh, Mississippi State as a defensive quality control coach where – during his time down there, he helped coach guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Montez Sweat or, you know, help with the development of them. Uh, he also, during his time at Penn State as a defensive line graduate assistant, worked with Carl Nassif, Anthony Zettel. So he's worked with a lot of top-tier talent during his short time in coaching. Like you said, spent time as a Penn State defensive line graduate assistant. Also spent time at Fordham, Mississippi State, James Madison, Old Dominion, and West Virginia uh, so definitely a lot of familiarity with this Penn State staff, uh, with the region, and early returns at our, as a recruiter look uh, look to be quality. Uh, of course, at Penn State, you'd be expected to recruit a little bit of a higher level, um, but I have heard good things about him on the recruiting trail. Yeah, I think the other thing that we kind of have to mention, I know you, you said Old Dominion, and he coached under Ricky Rain, and obviously Franklin yeah. is very close with him. Uh, former Penn State offensive coordinator. So 
you kind of can ask him and you can kind of go reach out to Ricky and be like, Hey, like, I know, I, I know he was uh, back at Penn state back in the day, but like, how was he as a coach? He obviously moved up the ladder because he was now at uh West Virginia, but just yeah. uh, that little connection there could always help. But, um, yeah, we, we're just, it's we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to keep going down the line here. Cause there, there's just so many names to go through. Um, I think yeah. one that doesn't really have a Penn state connection, but has a ton of uh, Pennsylvania connections, especially Western PA. Charlie Partridge. If you could steal him from Pitt, I mean. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be an absolute home run high higher here. I mean, if you can't get a name like Eliza Robinson, uh, Partridge would be quite the home run right after him. And he will also be, you know, really tough to get. He's been at Pitt now for a while since 2017. Uh, and they've been able to keep him there despite, you know, getting other programs taking a run at Partridge. But he is a fantastic recruiter. He recruits well above what Pitt, I think, should be recruiting at on the at on the defensive line. And we all know what he can do, coach at defensive lines. He has routinely put out some of the best defensive lines in the country while at Pitt. And frankly, he does it with lesser talent than uh, like Penn State has had over the last few years. And I'm not taking anything away from John Scott Jr. or K or or Coach Sean Spencer, who we may even bring up here shortly. Uh, Penn State's done a great job on the defensive line, but when you look at probably recruiting and then production at the college level, I'm not sure there's anybody in the country who's done a better job than Chris Partridge at those at, at that. Yeah, I mean, we, we got to mention it too. He was also named the 2022 um, Football Scoop Defensive Line Coach of the Year over yeah. – all fellow finalists, John Scott Jr., um, a bunch of other names that probably aren't going to even show interest in Penn State. But there's James Madison, Pat Kunst, defensive line coach, too, who's, who made a finalist who I thought would be an interesting one. But, um, yeah, no, Partridge is great. Like, he's a, he's a great recruiter. I know I've dealt with him in the past, um, even in his Florida Atlantic days. Like, he always wanted to recruit this area in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and yep. any, anywhere in the Northeast. He has those connections, and yeah. he's, he's very tight with these kids, and he just he understands it. But, uh, Absolutely. And, what next name? And it, I was just going to add with Partridge. It, it's going to be tough, not just because he's been there since 2017, but if you even go back, he was there from 2003 to 2007 as well as a defensive line mm-hmm. coach, special teams coordinator, uh, and linebackers coach. So he has a lot of history with that program. Mm-hmm. And you would have to think Pat Narduzzi would throw as much money as Pitt possibly could at him to keep him around, if it, especially if it meant keeping him from – Penn State, which I know Penn State and Pitt aren't scheduled to play anytime soon, um, if ever again. But you don't want to be losing Partridge of your Pitt to Penn State because uh, that would uh, that'd also be certainly a hit uh, to your in-region recruiting. Because while they don't always cross over, uh, there is some crossover between Pitt and Penn State for defensive line prospects. It's just like any other um, sports team, whether professional. It's there's that little brother syndrome over there. Uh, <laughs> but we'll move on from that one. Uh, next up, we got Sean Spencer. Uh, obviously, he was with Penn State for a couple years. Um, ended up leaving for the NFL with the New York Giants for two seasons, I believe, before uh, that new regime or that regime at the time got fired. And now uh, he went back to Florida last season, and he's he's got a ton of titles down at Florida. But will would he be would uh Penn State be able to kind of pry him away if it was the money was right? He's all, he's coaching in the Northeast for quite a bit. Yeah, that's that's the a really good question because you look down at that Florida program right now and it's kind of a disaster. Uh, just a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you you want to talk about job security? Uh, SEC teams usually don't uh, get a ton of job security, especially a program like Florida, uh, and. Their head coach uh, doesn't have the money that Jimbo Fisher has that allows them to, you know, not fire him uh, because of large buyouts. So uh, it's an interesting job situation. And they're one that I could see him wanting to get out of. Now, he has done a great job uh, there recruiting-wise for the Gators so far since returning to the college football game. If the money is right, I think he'd be – he may be interested – it's a really intriguing one because he obviously spent time in his past in the, in the SEC as well in the South. Um, but he also, like you said, has spent a lot of time in the North. I mean, after he left Penn State, he went to the Giants for a little bit there. Um, 
it's an intriguing one. I really don't know how I feel both sides would feel themselves about uh, a possible reunion, but it's definitely an intriguing name to consider. Uh, and, and we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, uh, like like I said before, a ton of Northeast connections, a Connecticut native, coached at West Wing, coached at UMass, coached at Shippingsburg, uh, UMass again, Holy Cross, Villanova, Hofstra, UMass again, UMass again. Um, Penn State, Penn State, New York Giants. Like it's, he spent the majority of his life in the Northeast. Maybe he just likes the Southeast now, just because it's so hot and the weather's better. To be honest, but he's also been with Franklin for a while. Like he was, he was with Franklin yeah. at Vanderbilt, if I'm correct. Yeah, 2011 through 2017. Yeah, so he he's been with Franklin for a long time. So it wouldn't shock me. And like you mentioned, Florida, Florida can't pay a buyout, let alone pay a quarterback. So there, there's a lot of issues coming yeah. on down there. And. And it will be interesting because he already does have a co-defensive coordinator title at mm-hmm. Florida. Uh, I'm not sure if his salary or Florida makes their salaries public or not, but that that would that'll be something I look into uh, this evening because we will put out a big board here with these names and more for uh, either uh, Tuesday or Wednesday on the Nation. Um, but yeah, it would be interesting money wise where that would have to come out for a p- potential reunion if both sides are interested. So I mean, just while while we're on the topic of it, I just looked it up real quick. Apparently, he was making one mil at Florida. Oh God, that's, that's, that's significant that's, money. <laughs> that is significant money. Uh, we do know that James Franklin has received a little bit of a boost to his player salary. Sorry, his uh, coach's salary coaching pool. pool. Yeah, there you go. yeah, assistant coach and pool, not player salary, though. In today's NIL, that's basically what we do have. <laughs> but um, yeah, we do know Franklin has received a little bit of a boost to that pool, uh, but obviously, no specifics are known at that at this time about that. But yeah, a million dollars is a nice chunk of money uh, that Penn State would have to uh, go beyond. And you know, Florida probably has a little bit of a wiggle room there too of how much they would be willing to raise his salary by if there's mm-hmm. interest. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see how much money they have because they did just re-up their offensive line coach because he was getting looked at by a couple of Big Ten programs. Um, I know, like, even the Pittsburgh Steelers tried to steal their offensive steal yeah. their offensive line coach this offseason as well. So I, yeah. they, they might be running out for all we know. But uh, there's only one more name I have on my list that I want to mention, and that's uh, Chris Achuf out, of, uh, Achuf out of Syracuse. Now, tell me a little bit about him. I know he's a PA native. Yeah, this is a guy that I honestly wasn't thinking a whole much about until you really brought him up. But, yeah, he's a Philadelphia native. He's been around for quite a while. He coached a mile modern and could stand to start his career back in 2000. Um, went went to Bloomsburg, has a ton of ties to Pennsylvania, but also spent time, spent time in the NFL with the Arizona Cardinals uh, as an assistant defensive line coach as well as a defensive line coach before. Uh, going to Syracuse uh, in 2020, where their defensive line has been solid the last few years. Uh, overall, track record is pretty solid. I mean, if you get to the NFL, you have to be a pretty damn good uh, coach at whatever position you are coaching. Uh, I believe during his time with the Cardinals, uh, Chandler Jones was an all-pro and one of the best you know, pass rushers in the league as well. Uh, and, and he also spent time at Baylor where he – I believe developed a couple all Americans and all conference selections for the Bears as well. Uh, during so overall, good track record here it has ties to Pennsylvania recruits, you know, coaches and recruits in areas that Penn State would be uh, in interest of uh, going forward. I know New Jersey, sorry, New York isn't exactly an area where they're going into deeply every year, but. He has experience. He has ties to Texas, which Penn State will always uh, want going forward. Uh, so definitely a name to consider going forward there, um, and one I'm going to definitely look more into this evening. Yeah, I know. Like, we're, we're pretty far down the list at this point. We're at number eight, list or name number what eight nine at this point. It's 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 a long one. So I mean, like there's there's a bunch of different names. There's a home run higher in that list. There's a couple lower names, and then there's like the obvious choices. Yeah. So we'll just have to yeah, kind of I, wait I and for, see. And I forgot to mention with Chuf too. I don't know how I forgot, but he was he did spend uh, 2002 and 2003 with Penn State as a graduate assistant as well. Mm-hmm. So has coached in Happy Valley, 
albeit 20 years ago, but does have that experience in Happy Valley. It's crazy to say that was 20 years ago in 2002, 2003. That's, that's something. Yeah. Don't worry about this. <laughs> it's anyway. Um, so that's all we really got in terms of coaching stuff. That's all the names we have for the time being. This is just like an immediate reaction type thing. We're going to try to do more of these in the future. Um, one thing I do want to mention, um, Kari Jackson committing tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, he's got a couple of finalists. How, how do we, I know what the future cast say, but how are you feeling about this one for Penn state? Um, yeah. So I forget what, ex- if he has an exact time he's committing, um, but you know, with 24 hours, less than 24 hours to go here until commitment, I feel pretty, pretty good about Penn state's chances here. I'd be pretty surprised if it wasn't in any lines here. Um, They've been leading since that junior day visit last month. Uh, and I'm a little surprised he's ending it this soon, but I'm not surprised. I'm not going to be surprised if it is, it is the any lines, as you know, you can tell by our future cast being in. I've submitted mine all the way back on the 24th uh, last week. Uh, but we've been saying on the side that Penn State's been leading going all the way back until right after that junior day visit last month. So this one has been coming, I think, for a few weeks now. Just didn't initially expect it to be this fast. But if you're Penn State, you're not going to turn them down at this point. You're going to definitely take that type of talent uh, and continue to build what could be a great linebacker class in this 2024 recruiting cycle. Yeah, I mean, I had him in the number 193 in the country, along with Anthony Specca, and then you – you kind of anything else is just fool's gold at that point. You're just getting a yeah, reap in the rewards. So our subscribers um, can go back and listen to our podcast from Friday where we went in depth on those remaining options that they could add. Yeah. And if you guys aren't already uh, following, subscribe down below on YouTube or if you're on one of your podcasting apps, just give us a five star review. We really appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's really it. Anything else, Dylan, before we sign off? No, no, not beyond that. I mean, we may uh, do another podcast this week before then, but also we're known that Ken, Kenneth Rosalie of Imhotep is uh, released his top uh, what three last week. And I, I am hearing that a decision could come in the upcoming weeks. Uh, so that will be something to watch as well. Friday. Friday. I, I, yeah, Friday. Go. All right. Yeah, Friedman posted about it before. Uh, yeah, he's just, he's uh, deciding on Friday, and it sounds like we we might have another podcast coming out real soon. So stay tuned for that. And uh, absolutely, my name's Rich Schneider. Right, that's Dylan Callen Crawley, and we're members of Nittany Nation. Be sure to check us out on PennState.Rivals.com. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, signing off. <laughs>